Hello TV fam, so crazy week yesterday um, from last week na pumasok si Cal at saka si Clark sa school nila Clark has been staying there for I think only 2 hours so sinusundo ko siya every 11.15 so this day they added an additional hour so 12.15 Binigyan na rin siya ng packed lunch para matest siguro ng mga teachers ko how independent are they pag kumakain during lunch. Kana bauna naman siya ni Joyce ng pagkain. Uh, pero siguro labas na lang din kami. Rare yung chance na magkaroon ng free time. Pa naman tayo pumapasok sa work. I think it's just best to at least spend some time no, with Clark. So, ang gagawin ko, um, pick up ko siya. And then, pagka-pick up ko sa kanya, punta kami maybe in a restaurant na may french fries kasi lagi yun yung favorite niya. Uh, and then, for us to have lunch or a small snack kasi alam ko medyo busog na rin naman siya. So, yeah. Um, better take this opportunity while I can. Kasi nga, I won't be able to do that pagka nag-work na tayo. So, pwede nyo, nakajakit na tayo. Umuulan sa labas. And uh, actually, na-expect ni Clark na susundin ko siya nang naglalakad. Pero since alabas tayo, I'm thinking daling ko na yung kotse, park ko na doon para at least malapit. And then diretso na kami kung saan man kami mad madala ng uh, aming mga paa <laughs> today. Andito na tayo sa school actually. Uh, we just parked dito sa my street dahil nga pag nagpark kasi doon sa mismong school itself, medyo nagiging traffic pagka labasan na so, it's currently 11.52. Maaga pa tayo. Pero, mag-aantay na lang din tayo dito. Dito tayo sa DQ. Mag-aantay ng uh, banana split. I want ice cream. I don't want pineapple. Come here. I don't want pineapple. I want banana. Ako, um, lumaki na dito sa gantong ice cream. Alam niyo yung story na Magnolia dati? Ayan, dinadala kami ng parents namin doon. Ito din lang the pineapple on ice cream. Ayan, here you go. Come here. Doggy house. My dog house. Dahil nakinig si Clark ngayon sa teacher niya at hindi siya lumabas ka agad ng room, tinreat natin siya. Here. Ganoon naman tayo eh. Kung ano yung nakalakihan natin, di ba? Yun din yung tuturo natin sa mga anak natin. Come on. Move closer. Yung banana split pa nga nun sa Magnolia. Kung matatandaan nyo, nasa buko. ba Yung shell nung buko. Tapos nandun yung banana split. Hello, TV fam! So, another day, another vlog, another, sabi ko nga sa previous na vlog natin, is another set of public sector interviews. What the hell is even that? So for today's video, uh, isasama ko kayo in another interview with the public sector. Uh, kita nyo naman, formal tayo ulit ngayon. No? This is uh, an online interview. Ulit ang gagawin natin. So dahil nag-request nga yung isa sa mga subscribers natin, shout out kay uh, Michelle in Canada na nag-request uh, ng vlog na to. Na ang sabi niya is very interesting daw na ma-share natin at ma-vlog natin yung mga interview sessions natin with the public sector companies na ina-apply natin. At yan ang gagawin natin exactly for today's vlog. So, I have another interview with another public sector company uh, na ipapakita ko sa inyo later on. Pero in the meantime, isasama ko na rin yung pre-screening interview na ginawa ko. Kasi in, in some public sectors, hindi kagad yung hiring manager yung makikipag-usap sa'yo. Usually, they will ask HR to give you a call and then ipipre-screen ka nila. It's gonna be an informal interview. Normally, nagda-last yan for 30 minutes lang. Para ma-share ko sa inyo kung ano nangyayari dyan, panoorin nyo tong clip na to. So before we start, I'd just like to ask you if there's anything during the conversation that I can make it easier or more accessible for you. Will you need some break? Stop. Do you have already a bottle of water with you? I have mine here. If you want to go grab one, that's fine. But is there anything you might need us uh, to provide you for our call today? No, no. And thank you for asking. Um, I'm all ready. Sure. Just like you, I have my water bottle beside me. So let's discuss a bit more about the position. It's a senior um, um, advisor, I would say, role. 
So this person is leading a team of one to two uh, supply analysts. And it's uh, sitting, um, it's a team that has recently changed the structure. So instead of reporting to our technology department, now supply chain is reporting to people, culture, and sustainability. Oh, okay. So um, we have, yeah, we have this, this position reporting to a senior manager. Then there's a group of senior managers reporting to the director and then to the VP, people's uh PCS, right? People, culture, and sustainability. So tell me, uh, what motivated you to apply for this position? Well, um, upon reading the uh, duties and responsibilities, I think it just fits um, based on my experience. Has always been like a significant dream of mine to be able to use my skills to benefit or make a little bit of an impact to my community. Okay, okay, it makes certain makes totally sense, and thank you for sharing that. In terms of your career development, I see that you uh, spent quite some time in uh, Best Buy, right? That is correct. Um, starting a career as a senior buyer retail, and then moving into a senior buyer IT, mm-hmm. and then strategic sourcing specialist. Yes. Uh, so from 2019 up to 2022, I guess, middle of the pandemic, you survived through all this time there. <laughs> yes. And, uh, but what would be the main change, uh, reason for changing, for leaving? I see no gap in your resume, but it's good to know. Did you resign? So you resigned because you saw opportunity to have more challenging uh, portfolio correct. as well as more autonomy to manage that. That right? is correct. That is correct. When you mean autonomy, can you clarify a bit more just for me to understand? Okay, I understand. And um, did you lead a team you mentioned when you were there as category manager? Okay, perfect. And tell me, why did you lead them? Because so, it's very recent, right? I know, yes. So in terms of work authorization, you kind of already clarified when you created your profile, you were entitled to work in Canada, mm-hmm. uh, eligible to work in Canada with no limitations, right? That is correct. In terms of conflict of interest as a public sector employer, he wants to ensure that none of our employees are involved in any conflict of interest. We would like to take a snapshot of the current moment. We know things change over time, but I'm going to be reviewing some scenarios with you. Feel free to answer with the best of your knowledge, okay? Sounds and if good. there's anything, we'll try to, to accommodate and, 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 and discuss. Do you have any relatives or close friends that currently work for, own, or operate at any kind of supplier of goods or services twice? No. And finally, are you involved in any boards, associations, or volunteer activities which may conflict with the interest of business? No, I don't think so. So how does it work? I'm going to be sharing my notes with the hiding manager by the end of the day today because we still have more people to on screen. Mm-hmm. And um, they will decide on the next step. If they decide to move forward, they will connect with you directly to schedule an interview, okay. similar to what I did for the phone screen. Okay. And in parallel, our recruitment team will send you a link to complete a talent assessment online. We do that because um, this assessment will give us the behavioral questions for the interview. Okay. So we only invite you to the assessment if they already connect with you for the interview, but we need you to complete the assessment before the interview so I can generate the, the interview guide for them. Okay? Okay. Sounds good. We still have one last step in the process, which is the longest step, I would say, pre-employment checks. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a vendor that is connecting with the candidate to ask them authorization and then a couple of contact information and, and documents for them to go run the check for us. Mm-hmm. They usually are checking your highest level of education completed. I see you mentioned in your resume your Bachelor in uh, Business Administration, That right? is correct, yes. With a major in computer application. So usually they're going to be asking a copy certificate for you just to check that. Um, they're going to be asking at least two references from recent managers. Okay. Um, and they check also employment verification over the last five years. So they're going to be asking contact information from your employers over the last five years so they can check uh, job titles, periods of work there. Um, there's a pre-placement health assessment, just a form to be filled by the candidate. So okay. if there is anything, any accommodations, any modifications, we are happy to provide that before the start date. 
And finally, a criminal record check as well. So once this process is cleared, we send a message to the hiring manager and the candidate to let them know they can connect to discuss the agenda for the first week. Okay. So, yun na nga yung nangyari. Hopefully, nakatulong sa inyo kung ano ba yung mga tinatanong or napapag-usapan during the pre-screening interview with the HR. Uh, it's a casual conversation lang naman, more or less. And then, in some public sector, uh, actually, just like nung eto interview na to, they prefer uh, an interview, although online, no? Microsoft Teams, they will prefer na i-turn off mo yung camera mo. In general, pag nag hire ka, ang advice sa mga HR is not to have them visibly on the screen. Ang tanong yung siguro, bakit? It's the same concept then kung bakit dito sa Canada, discourage nila na maglagay ng photo sa resume. It's because kasi pag nakita nila yung itsura mo, normally and psychologically, ang sabi nila is it will impact on how will they assess ang isang candidate. So, it just makes sense na i-recommend nila to turn off yung camera or pag nag-online ka na just used voice during the interview para sa ganun walang bias. It's gonna be more on them listening to you uh, while they ask questions and then them, you know, putting in their notes. Uh, Nag-iiba at nag din sila doon sa unang uh, tumawag at nag-interview sa atin. Kasi doon, ang tumawag sa atin kagad is yung hiring manager. Nag-schedule kagad sila ng panel interview for for me. Um, from panel interview down to an interview with the director. So, it varies. Pero it's good thing na yung different types is napuntahan natin, na-explore natin, and uh, marami tayong na-experience na in the end is marami din ako na share sa inyo as you go your journey on applying for a public sector. That is if kung nandito na kayo sa Canada or if nasa Philippines kayo, more or less same principle din naman na ina-apply. Now, ang interview natin would start at 1pm in the afternoon. Uh, talagang tinime ko yung interview and... Uh, in schedule ko to on this particular day kasi nga si Clark cool day na <laughs> so wakas I'll prepare lang muna and then uh, isama ko na lang kayo ulit no pagka nag-start na akong mag-interview mamaya again uh, hindi ko na ibi-bleep out ko na lang yung mga answers ko uh, to you know keep it confidential ang importante dito is for everyone watching this video to know kung ano yung mga tinatanong nila para nang sa ganun magkaroon kayo ng idea on how to answer that if you were gonna be applying sa public sector I'm on my cell phone at the moment I'll, I'll log in shortly so I'm listening here nice to meet you John nice to meet you as well Anna yeah alright so um what we'll do is we'll just kind of do a quick, quick little introduction and then overview, and then um, we'll get into some questions um, until Anna Maya, can, if we get into the questions before Anna Maya is fully connected, then I'll just be um, doing that the question reading part. Okay. Um, and the position that you've applied to would report up to me directly. Okay. And then you would have two junior buyers reporting up to you. Uh, we call them SA1, the supply analysts, but they're essentially junior buyers. Their primary role is creating contracts in SAP, issuing purchase orders, maintaining uh, our shopping carts and flow through purchases and low complex bids. Um, the one that really keeps them busy is our facilities. We have um, a fairly large facilities portfolio, approximately 60 different locations that we maintain. Um, so there's quite a bit like snow removal, landscaping, construction jobs, bat re re retrofits. So. Um, that kind of keeps us keeps me on the go more than the big spend, the billion dollar spend portfolio. Gotcha. Um, so when we get into the questions, we're gonna start off with just a couple of really light, fluffy, get to know you kind of questions. Okay. And then we'll move into some behavioral style questions. When we're going through the questions, um, don't hesitate to ask us to repeat the question, or if we need to skip it and come back to it, we're more than we're more than happy to accommodate that. Um, I tend to type my notes in, so I won't be made with an NMI, right? It's old school, I think. So we don't we don't read our body language and into how you're answering the questions. We're going to be focusing on making sure we're just hearing everything and capturing everything. Um, and and um, if you're ready, we'll get going. That sounds good. 
So the first one we we like to ask is just, uh, can you please uh, let us know what interests you in this position and then how does it fit to your overall career goals? I think you kind of covered the next question already, that the highlighting areas in your background and skills and experience that you think will help you in this in this role to be successful in it. Is there anything else that you would like to mention? Um, and it doesn't need to be direct management or leadership experience, but if you have any in those areas, if you could highlight something in your background. Do you have an example of what would be one of your more complex or high spend, high risk projects? Can can you um, um, John basically the, uh, you mentioned that that you you felt you had an impact in the PPE and kind of that kind of public public sector lens and that uh, you how much do you have exposure and knowledge about the kind of the procurement in the public setting and uh, the what what governs it and and that type of thing. And just I'll expand on a little bit more. Um, in public, where we're really we're bound strictly by various trade agreements. Correct. Um, have you had any exposure to the the trade agreements? Do you have any background working within the parameters? One more leading question before we get into the good one, the juicy ones, because um, I picked something up out of your resume that kind of piqued my interest. Um, and mostly because of the work that we're just starting to do in social impact procurement. And I noticed in your resume that you made it, um, a note, and I just want to double check what it said so I get it right, that um, you're also one of the key personnel to drive and support TELUS's diverse and indigenous supplier initiatives. Um, and that one piques an interest to me. And it's like, can you spend just a couple minutes? We don't go too far into it, but what what experience or what um, what does that what does that um, being a key personnel like? What are you guys do? What are you doing to be active in that role of increasing indigenous um, exposure to our your supplier? Now? Thank you very much for that. Appreciate that. A quick question: The ten points out of how many is it? A hundred. Out of hundred. Uh, okay. Out of well, that's a that's a pretty um, high high weighting. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Um. So now we're going to move into the behavioral style uh, questions. What we'll do is read the heading, the 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 controversy that we're going to be looking for, and then we'll read the question. Okay. Uh, so this one's under influence and persuasion. And can you please describe a challenge you had persuading internal customers or senior management? while providing advice on best procurement strategies. Thank awesome. you. Thank you. The next question is about negotiation. So can you please describe a challenging acquisition negotiation regarding pricing and or terms and conditions in which you were involved? And what was the situation, your actions and the outcome of this negotiation? How much were you able to bring them down? Uh, not a lot, but uh, to a considerable <laughs> amount where the yes. business were already happy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thanks. So the next one is under leadership. Can you tell us about a time when you effectively use constructive feedback to coach someone? Thanks. The next one is about decision making and problem solving. So. Can you please describe a situation where you had to make a decision that normally would have been escalated to your manager? And how did you handle the decision-making process and what was the result? So the next one we have for you is under policies, process and procedures. Have you ever gone out of your way to communicate or reinforce a company policy to your peers? If yes, what did you do and what was the result? And if not, how would you make sure that your message was communicated effectively and that the processes or policy is followed? The next one is about the resource management. So can you please describe a time you had to deliver a project with limited funds and minimal resources? How, how did you do it? Last behavioral style question is under respecting diversity. 
So workforce diversity can bring with it many differing perspectives on various aspects of work. What would you say are the benefits of having a diverse workforce? And also, can you describe a time when you benefited from being part of a diverse workforce? I, I, I love this question. Okay, so like I said, we're now finished of asking you questions. Um, do you have any additional questions or that you would like to ask of us that we haven't covered off yet? Okay, well, thank you very much. So we're right in the middle of our interviewing. So um, likely we'll be probably going into next week before you hear anything more back from us. So if it's been a few days, don't panic. We're, we're, we do have schedule, um, interviews scheduled for in going into next week, but we will be in contact. Sounds good. It was a pleasure right. meeting you, Dennis and Anna. Thank yeah, you very thanks, much. Thanks, John. Right. Okay, bye. 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 So, alam ko naputol yung uh, <laughs> vlog natin, no? Pasensya na kung naputol siya. Uh, for some reason, uh, yung camera natin nag-overheat. So, maybe because uh, natapatan siya ng araw. But anyway, I think the interview went well. Um, I was able to um, answer the questions and I was able to provide a bit of a context uh, as to how the team is in terms of yung potential relationship na magkakaroon tayo with the said team. I guess it's now up to me to decide kung are we still going to wait or are we going to accept uh, an existing offers. Update ko kayo dyan. Um, uh, right now, it's uh, already past two. mag uh, lang tayo and then susunduin na natin si Clark mamaya miyala. Big question natin is, you know, conduct na tayo ng uh, poll sa YouTube. And uh, lumalabas nga dito, no, tingnan natin ha, puntahan natin mismo yung uh, uh, poll. So nag-post tayo ng poll, no, na kung saan, uh, ano ba yung magandang gawin. <laughs> In the hopes na matulungan sana tayo mag-decide kung mag-aantay ba tayo or tatanggapin na natin yung offer. And uh, sad to say, ang sagot nila is, ay, kita nyo ba yan? 50-50. No? 50-50. <laughs> so, nakakatawa lang kasi um, inad ko yan para sa ganun maka, you know, makapag uh, kuha ko ng outside uh, perspective. Uh, pero it ended up na half, half pa rin yung mga tao na nag-vote, no, na... Ikaw, para parang sinabi na sa'yo na ikaw na mag-decide kasi 50-50. <laughs> kalahate, tanggapin na daw yung initial offer. Yung kalahate, mag-wait pa kung dun sa mga darating na offer. <laughs> nabaliwala, nabaliwala yung ating uh, uh, gustong ma-attain. Pero uh, anyway, salamat pa rin sa mga nag-send uh, ng kanilang uh, votes. No, uh, kung tatanggapin ba or mag-antay ng uh, pangalawang offer. Salamat pa rin sa... Uh, activity na binigay nyo. Then, uh, siguro ngayon, uh, pag-isipan na lang talaga natin kung pag decision na ba talaga natin at i-accept natin yung yung current offer na nasa table. Oh! Ang hirap pag-decide, no? Uh, so, ito yung, ito yung dilemma. Um, parehong company na in natin, uh, they sent, yung isa already sent an offer. Yung isa, they send a sign that they're interested sa'yo. In terms of difference, yung isa mas malapit, yung isa uh, Vancouver, no? hindi naman kalong kalayuan. Yung isa on-site ka for three months and then pwede ka mag-apply for a hybrid work. Uh, yung isa naman, hybrid na. In terms of uh, salary, mas malaki yung isa. Uh, in terms of vacation, Mas madami din tong isang to. <laughs> pero, pero nakukonvince pa rin ako na ang hirap, ang hirap kasi yung mag-decide eh. Um, gust, dapat ba i-risk mo losing an offer and waiting it for another one? Pero kasi ang end goal namin is umandar na yung tenure ko with a company para makapag-apply kami for mortgage next year kasi nga balak pa rin talaga namin mag-upgrade. Uh, kung hindi ko gagawin 'yon, mag-wait it out ka. Mas malaki yung potential risk na ma-delay 'yon. So the question is, 
dapat bang i-risk natin? <laughs> no? So, uh, pagmunimunihan muna natin tong decision na to and then uh, hopefully soon makapag-decide tayo. And I'm just praying na kung ano man yung maging decision natin, uh, yun yung direction na gustong puntahan natin, no? Ni Lord kasi ay 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 ayo ko maging masyadong objective dahil it would mean na I, I will be relying on my own decision. <laughs> City of mine How I love, how I love The city of mine It never gets me down City of mine How I love